Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to do um, another read this week. This is again following the um, new vibration that I've been hitting lately and things that are changing in my path. So I wanted to talk a lot about the Wetiko, the darkness, the shadow work. And this is beyond like what we actually think shadow work is about. I just did a whole new blog. I'm going to link it down below because this is about the true rise of sacred feminine energy, not the stuff that the Wetiko talks about. Now, if you guys don't know what the Wetiko is, I highly suggest going and looking at, there's lots of information about it. But when I'm working with people, and going deeply into your darkness, it's the only way to gain a certain state of enlightenment. You can't um, avoid it. You you can suppress it. You can um, make it feel better. You can have coping mechanisms towards it. But if you are avoiding okay. instead of learning and facing and integrating and holding, then you're going to be stuck um, in a loop consistently until you realize you have to change it up so welcome to my channel if you're new don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to work with me all that info is down below so let's get to it because the Watiko is the basis of where all darkness comes from and I'm just going to pull up a, a compass oracle to get started and this video is going to be you know I don't want to do really readings about things that that could happen in the ethers. You know, the ethers are changing all the time. Unless you do a reading with me or a session with me, then I can tap into your personal Akashic and pull down that information. This is more or less um, the readings are going to shift because so many people watch them. And I don't want to give that information out to the collective anymore. So that's why I changed things up and my podcast is changing. I mean, I'm always changing rebirth renewal that's sacred feminine energy right sacred feminines we have been chastised in this world for being not grounded or not being focused or well that's how energy plays out that's how energy works in our world that's how we are able to um follow how god leads us how the creator leads us um because it has to be in and out it has to be all over the place because it has to be unpredictable to gain faith if you don't have faith then you're not going to be able to follow the highest of the high and if you're continuously looking for those extensions in life that cope and placate and facilitate a certain level of frequency that as long as you feel okay and it goes away for a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Because healing is not just shadow work and you relieve it and it's done. No. It's also your ancestral karma and how the Watiko siphons you through your ancestral karma. It's why we have a lot of like childhood traumas and things that we haven't been able to work through and things like that. So this is going to <laughs> education. It's on the bottom of the deck. You've got to know thy enemy, right? And it's not even your enemy. The Wetiko is very much a place of um, the dark and the light mergence. And I've always had this understanding a lot of new age spiritual belief people don't, you know, in the community don't believe, and even the medicine community don't believe that light and dark can coexist. It coexists. We live in 3D reality. We're coexisting. It's happening right now. I don't know about you, but I hold a lot of light and I try to come from my highest self at all times. And um, I really take accountability for my stuff. So um, I'm still living in the world where there's war and evil. I'm coexisting. And so are you. So that's bollocks. <laughs> so I'm just going to say that. Um, and so in your own psyche, you're going to be able to understand the dark and the light as well you're going to be able to understand how they coexist together now the watiko is where demons come from et implants all those dark things that you're talk that we talk about that 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 manifest through your shadow okay so let's take a look here and see what spirit wants to bring up for the collective at this time mm. where are you not listening i just did a session with a, one of my beautiful 
long-term clients and these actually came up for her. So this may be for you. Um, listening, not listening and resisting change, right? This is where we remain stagnant in our path. If things aren't manifesting for y'all, this is why it's not manifesting because you're not hearing the darkness speak to you. The shadow wants to tell you something. The medicine is in the depths of the darkness. It's not about placating, being like, oh, love and light, love and light. If people are always love and light, I would have an issue with that. I would I would definitely say something about that because it's not just love and light. Like, have you looked around our planet? And so realizing what are you re- refusing to heal? What are you not able to see, right? Um, because you don't want to educate yourself on certain things. So. I'm going to talk about the twin flame journey and I'm going to tell you that the Watiko will also play, it's also called like the alien love bite or like narcissist or your false twin or whatever label you want to give it. You're going to be put through um, a purification before you meet your person. Divine feminines really go through this. And I, and this is what I, I wrote about on my blog. It's the rise of the feminine within all humans, because we have been the one, um, the foundational piece, right? Because everything grows from the earth. It is the foundational piece of where life stems from. And so the seed plants into the soil. And so if you repress the sacred feminine within all of us, then you're going to be able to manipulate the planet and the people and the mind and the psyche. And that's where the Watiko comes from, okay? It filters into your psychic realm and it takes over. It takes over things in your life. Um, and then you think it's a layer and you're like, how many layers are there? There's not a lot of, la- it's one layer. It's the Watiko. It's the one layer in your ancestry. That's it. It just manifests in different things. So if you're healing and trying to do things, well, this came up and this came up and you're trying to segregate them. And you're like, I need to heal this, this, and this. It's actually coming from one place. It's actually coming from one place. It's actually coming from, um, the darkness that has siphoned your lineage. And I talk a lot about this because it doesn't want you to come into your highest gift, which is your otherworldly gifts, your otherworldly gifts or your psychic ability. Work with me. I'll help you with your psychic gifts. That's where we're coming to as a, as a, as a species, right? It's the pineal gland. It's opening your pineal gland. It's recognizing that you have um, these other connections, these other states of consciousness that you can come into. And that can't fully happen until you face the darkness because the Vatico is what's holding everybody back in their psychic abilities, okay? So yeah, let's see what else Spirit wants to say here. The magic. Do you want the magic? We all talk about this magic, but it's very few and far in between that we experience it. You get glimpses. So if you're in repression of your sacred feminine energy, you're not going to really know your twin. Okay, You're not going to really know who your sacred counterpart is if you haven't done a certain amount of shadow work. And what I mean by that is you're still not doing it. You're at integration process. There's a big spiritual belief system out there that we're always healing. And I'm going to call bullshit on that. If we're constantly in a state of healing, that means that you don't see yourself in the perfection of God's light and how you were created. You're created completely perfect. And so any segregation from that, that you're consistently healing, blocks your flow. Completely blocks your flow. Now, when I say that you're completely healed, what that means is that you've healed the traumas, you've healed the the ancestry line, you've healed the patterns. You know what they are enough so that when they do come up, you know exactly what to do. You're not triggered anymore, okay? doesn't mean that they don't come up. It means that you're not responding to the trigger anymore. He's like, you're no longer engaging in it because you know what you deserve. You also know how gifted you are. You know how beautiful you are. You know how you were created. And so in that respect, you're willing to be triggered, (laughs) you know? You're willing for that now, okay? You're willing for the winds to come in and change. You could change your mind. Na, 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 na. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Do, do, do. Take a chance on me. <laughs> the wind is bringing the change for you to take a chance. 
for you to take the chance to finally look at the darkness that consistently holds you back. Okay. And so this is where you're not hearing, hearing things, right? So many of us have a belief system of who our person is, where we're meant to go, what we're supposed to do. We have attached to those details. And that's the human self. That's the human psyche. That is the reptilian mind. That is what we have to transcend. And that is where the Watiko lives. Now, the Watiko is a catch-22. It will create a whole dichotomy of like dark and light, right? It will, it will pull you into different places and help you rationalize certain things where you're at the point where you're like, I can't like this is literally keeping me stuck. It doesn't matter which way I go anymore is because of the Wetiko. And because of the Wetiko, you can't see clearly, including who your true person is. <sighs> Let's talk a little bit about twin flames, right? Twin flame is an energy. And I said this in the last video, it is not a person. You, different people are given certain chances on their evolution process to take that opportunity, yourself included. You can exit the twin flame journey if you truly wish, okay? You can be like, I don't want somebody that compliments me in, in my masculine or in my feminine. And you can definitely go to a lower frequency partner. Depends on where your state of evolution is, right? So some people prefer that. That's why you see in the new age community, I left my twin and I picked a soulmate. It's like, because they're not ready themselves to come into that balance. And there's nothing wrong with that. So in order to do that, see, there's many paths to finding that person. And so if you're attached to a person or a place or a thing or whatever else, you've got to learn to surrender that those are chemical reactions that have played in your psyche of what you believe this divine love is all about. Now, until you go and face the Watiko, you're not going to find that perfect balance of, of yin and yang. You're going to, you can sit with a soulmate to continue healing, right? But when you've healed your ancestry karma, right? And this is why I'm saying healing can be complete and you're triggered enough and when you are triggered enough in your ancestral karma that you actually can understand and know what to do at that point to pull back, how to go in, how to heal, how to speak to God, how to process, right? That's a process. And everyone has their own process. I help my clients discover their process um, and what works for them. But in that aspect of, you know, there are many paths of finding the twin. The twin is the creator, is God. You're finding God. You're finding your connection with the universe. So in that, you're finding your balance within yourself of dark and light. And so if you believed it was a certain person, that person was here who was able to embody those energies at the exact same moment that you were able to embody those energies and you were able to come into a beautiful activation that brought you that within yourself. Now, that person can most definitely come back. I've said this in the last video, they can come back if they have healed enough and they want to reactivate with you or God will choose somebody else for you and bring in a, a, a masculine or feminine who's done a lot of shadow work, who's been activated or has been, yeah, activated by the Watiko, by the darkness as well, so that you don't, because I'm telling you, if you come into a complete yin yang balance, that person's also going to have to go through a dark night. They're going to have to go through um, facing these dark entities and this shadow work. Your person, if you pick a soulmate, they're only starting that process. Okay. If you want the twin flame energy, then you're going to have to face the witchy go. You're going to have to go into that darkness. Okay. And face it. And because that's, you got to find your intuition. This is what, this is what I'm saying. You've got to be able to find that, see through the darkness, right? This is my, my animal totem. So it's my moon dance sign. So you have to move as a jaguar through the night, stealthily, right? Follow your intuition and to realize that whatever you came from, wherever you came from in that journey is to show you Okay, when the new person shows up or, or if that person returns, right? When the new frequency shows up for Twin Flame Energy Union, what's gonna happen 
is that you're going to be reminded of the cycle that you just healed. You're going to be reminded of what you've already gone through. You've already been prepared, right? You have already been prepared for this in order to gather your abundance, the gathering, right? You will already know what to do. You'll be able to hold space for that person. You'll be able to like detach when you need to detach. You'll be able to do your inner work. You won't get triggered because you've already healed. And that's the message that I wanted to bring through. You can be healed. It is how you integrate and work through those triggers in the process. That means you are healed, right? If you're still getting triggered and it's still spiraling you, right? It's a longer process of moving through certain things. That means that something still hasn't healed. But if you're able to most definitely connect to God, heal, and you're good within, you know, like it doesn't affect your entire day, you're healed. You're healed. I mean, granted, you're still going to go through stuff if you're going like two, three days and whatever. It's because it's going to resurface certain things, but it's not going to be the long cycles that you were accustomed before you first came into that activation. It's not going to be like months or weeks or even, you know, that long of a period. It could be a couple of days or so. But if you're hitting like a good, like past the three day point, I would definitely like go deeper into the shadow. There's something you're not seeing. There's something in the boutique. There's something in the psyche of your ancestry line that it's relatable to how you view love, connection, and what you deserve in your life and how you want to harvest things, right? So anyone and anything can be karmic. So I'm going to bring that up too. Um, depends on the temple and the energies that are filtrating into that vessel at that time. Okay. This is where you hear twins can turn karmic and this can turn karmic. Or this is why you can still feel your person when they elevate because you had an initial activation with them. Um, it doesn't always mean that they're coming back. It doesn't always mean that that is the person that you're meant to build a life with. It means that they are also working with the same activation that you've been working with. And because of that, you can still move forward. Okay. And I wanted to really bring this out because because of my ability to see through the darkness and see through, call the entities out and do that. And I've done exorcisms in my life. So if you are new, welcome, go look at my dark works, go look at all that. I'm like a real healer. Like I am playing no like, oh, I'm gonna pretend my hands on you and blah, blah, blah. I'm like a real damn healer. People shift when they work with me. People shift just by being in my presence. So I'm telling you, um, if you want real tangible results and you've been stuck, it's gonna, I, I'm gonna take you deep. I'm going to take you into what that diseased one consciousness mind that is infiltrated into your psychic realm and into your brain and into your actions and into your life and in through your ancestry line. And it's, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it because it's going to birth you into a new frequency, right? Yeah. And we have prosperity lies ahead to bring you that prosperity. Now, you know, I was just talking to a client. She's been working with me for a year. And she's just telling me like she couldn't even believe in this year reflection how much her life has changed working with me, right? And I'm only saying this because it is sacred feminine energy. Sacred feminine energies are the foundation. Nothing's going to grow until every human on this planet revamps her, rebirths her, reconnects with her, men included, honors the temple of the feminine, right? And if you're a masculine, you have daughters, right? This is the future, okay? Even if you have sons, I have sons. It's it's recognizing that they have to honor the feminine. You know, I was telling like my kids, I was like, that's not how you treat a woman. They've seen me struggle. I've done it all by myself. And I'm like, you honor women. You don't ever say this about them or treat them as chivalry. It's really is dead. Because the feminine grows and births nations. That's what she does. And she, if whatever you give a woman, she will multiply it. She will, a real woman will. She won't control it and tell you what to do. But if you give to her and you, and you are authentic with her and you're open with her, whatever you give in that authentic expression, she will multiply and give it right back to you. Right? And that is the basis of how we build proper sacred foundations on the planet. We have 
confidence is your key to success. Now, this is where a lot of masculine and feminine energies don't have confidence in what they're doing. So masculine energies are intimidated by real estate or feminine. Let me tell you my life story. <laughs> they're intimidated by real sacred feminine energy. They think that a uh, sacred feminine for masculine, that they're going to, they can either play the feminine or she's going to become like super clingy or emotional. She like puts her in this box of all this distorted stuff. You've already repressed the sacred feminine, real feminines, right? Now, granted, a lot of women are still in the distortion that they need to control and they're poor me and they're crying and they're like, they have to use their bodies to get what they want or they have to like, whatever, whatever, you know, that distorted stuff. And because of that, um, what happens is they'll buy into the stories that the distorted masculine plays and continues to play of the one consciousness of where the Watiko has completely siphoned divine feminine energy. And um, she'll buy into those things. And then you have a power struggle between the two. Now, let's talk about sacred feminine energies and what that is right? Sacred feminine energies create the container. We create the foundation. So if you're manifesting certain things into your life um, and they're not exact, right? Even if it's not exact, that means that there's still work to do on the inside, right? But if it feels like you're manifesting certain things and you're not quite there, it's not to do, to go back into distorted of feminine energies and try to control the situation. It is to get into your intuitive place, ground with God, sit with that energy. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to find a solution. Don't try to do any of that. You have to learn how to sit with that energy as uncomfortable as it is. You're not transmuting shit. I don't like when I hear sacred feminists. I'm holding faith. I'm not going to transmute all this stuff. No, screw you. That's not a thing. All right. Unless you're drinking ayahuasca and you're, and you're purging with the medicine, that's different. Or you're doing plants, the plants will do it for you. No human can do that for you. No human can help you purge that or hold enough space for you to do. You have to do that for yourself, divine feminine. Your aura is your temple. Clean that shit up. Okay. I'm going to put that on the shirt. Your aura is your temple. Clean that shit up. When it comes to you, it is not to avoid it by spiritual bypass and be like, that's evil. That's too much. That's too dark. Yeah. It's time to look at it because that's where your intuitive powers lie. That is where God is actually guiding you to look at it, to look at the psychic realms to look at how it's being siphoned, to see how your ancestry line is being trying to be housed and contained in these darker energies. But it's also trying to show you the gift of the light that, that really wants to come out for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nothing will come from the situation. No, nothing will come from it. See how dark it is. That's why you're stuck. Safer feminines. That's why you're stuck because sacred feminines have got to use manip. I mean, not sacred, but distorted feminines have to use manipulation and, and give solutions. If you're giving solutions, you're not in sacred feminine energy. We get the high visions of what it's supposed to be like. We have a vision and we ask God to bring in the masculine to be able to build that, to be able to work with that. Okay. Get out of your head. There is a divine blueprint of gender. There's a law of gender that is on this planet. and Women are meant to create that foundation, create that container. That could be also with your business. That can be also with whatever you're doing in your life. But once you create that pure container, the masculine and who God has created you for, who is able to hold that template, who's able to hold that energy will come in. Now, you're going to have to still do certain things in your life to ensure that they don't muddy up your temple. Right? Do not let people walk with dirty shoes in your temple. Do not set the boundaries. Doesn't mean that you can't engage with them. See, sacred feminine energies are so abundant and so resourceful and so intuitive. What happens is they can vibrate with anybody. All right. You want to be this way with me? Okay, I'll be that way with you. Demonic feminine, and they call us manipulative or they call us over emotionally or they call us charlatans or, you know, our psychic guests or whatever. It's like we get, divine feminists get repressed in all kinds of bullshit. So if you see how someone's matching your energy and they're not matching your vibe, don't try to please that person. Don't try to get something. Express your truth. Express what you got to say. Don't look at the bottom of the, of the deck. The energy is gaining momentum. And keep doing you, babe. Keep doing you. Keep like 
holding your pure vibe, create the container, create your life, create that womb energy. That person will either vibrate out or it will trigger them into their own healing because that's what real feminines do. You don't got to do nothing. You just have to maintain your aura, your auric field and the womb of the mother and that vibration. And that will naturally attract what you need. And whatever you need, you're going to have to revamp your, your area, again, your aura, again, and pull back and do what you need to do, set certain boundaries, speak or don't speak, sometimes not saying anything is good, and um, change up your vibe to accommodate that person. Because, see, that's how you're going to gain momentum in your life. That's how you're going to move forward. You cannot hold the same frequency with everybody that's around. You have to learn how to morph in your intuition, in your empathic gifts, to be able to learn how to sit with multiple people and have discernment with them and what you're actually giving. And the thing is, when you're a sacred feminine, if that person is unawakened to you, divine feminine, it could be a man or a woman, whatever, right? It could be your divine masculine, whatever it is, right? When you are in that place of shifting it up or even expressing and talking and being in your truthful place, it's going to trigger the other person. It's going to trigger them somehow into an old pattern. They're going to pull away and be like, what is this? Like, she's okay that I'm doing this? Or that works with other people. You know, they're going to be like, oh, when I say this to other women, this is how they act. Well, no, because you're dealing with a sacred feminine. We're totally different. You've healed right? Because you're not triggered as much. You are you know how to cope. You know how to move through that. And this is what I'm saying. If you have trouble with that, hit me up. That's why I work with divine feminines because um, you've got to be able to learn how to magnetize and be in all kinds of different energies on this planet and to know yourself so authentically in order to be able to be your full expression. And what I mean by that is like, you're seeing the visions, you're in your intuitive knowing and you're acting from the inside out. You're not acting from the mind. You're not trying to control. You're not trying to give solution. You're not trying to focus. You're, you're just naturally allowing the flow to move through you. That's how feminines work. And dependent on the frequency that's in your vibration at that time, dependent on the people that are around you, you know how to be. We're like chameleons, right? But you're not being, you're not wearing a mask. You're just being you at a certain frequency. So for instance, you know, um, say like you have a, a coworker that you just don't get along with, right? You know, in the frequency, you can still be your bubbly self. You can still be your kind self. You can still be who you are, but you also know that you have a certain frequency that you can't go with that person. You have to know what that limitation is, especially in your empathic ability, okay? Whereas somebody that you're close with, you know that you can share more, right? And it's not even just about the personality trait of it. It is feeling the energy, matching vibrational frequencies, recognizing where you're at, recognizing how they match your patterns, recognizing if it's a karmic cycle or if it's, you know, something new. You've got to become so fine-tuned in your energy discernment as a sacred feminine to be able to hold a very strong magnetizing sacred feminine aura. Last one, that's because you've surrendered to God, surrendered to the divine. And I'm going to leave it at that. That was your message for today. If you want to work with me, all the info is down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.